Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm very honored to be again, all right from a distance, at the Beijing Forum 2020 under the theme, The Harmony of Civilizations and Prosperity for All, New Challenges and Opportunities of Globalization. I know how important this gathering is, following on 16 years of successful debates, encouraging and facilitating research in humanities and social sciences in order to promote social progress and improve human lives through academic and cultural efforts. The year 2020 is the year of important anniversaries, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and of UNESCO, whose Director General I had the privilege to be for eight years. 25 years after the historic United Nations Beijing Conference on Women, Equality, Development and Peace, and the adoption of the Beijing Platform of Action, which is still the most progressive document for women's equality and empowerment. This was supposed to be the year of high ambitions when the United Nations were taking stock of the achievement of the Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals 2030, five years after their adoption. 2020 was supposed to be the year policymakers take stock of the fight against climate change, five years after Paris, and to make a big push for more bolder and more robust policies, particularly after the disappointing COP25 in Madrid and the shocking wildfires in Australia and the Amazon at the end of 2019 and in California just a few months ago. Instead, the world is confronted with the world's crisis since the Second World War with unprecedented political, economic, social and humanitarian consequences. The coronavirus pandemic has affected millions of people and is still spreading around, causing immense human suffering. The devastating result is shrinking economies and job opportunities, rising inequalities, and surging poverty and emerging food insecurity, with a dangerous impact on efforts to fight climate change and ensure sustainable path for development. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez, sadly launched an alarming alert. The world may be going back almost 25 years in its development and many achievements will be pushed back. Against this background, I would like to, to share with you four points. The first, is the role of multilateralism and the United Nations in its core, and within this, the broader international cooperation and exchange. In its own way, this pandemic reinforced the understanding that unilateralism cannot be the answer to the challenges of our time. The world needs more multilateralism and not less. It is on the United Nations platform that the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030 was unanimously adopted and the Paris Climate Agreement, the most ambitious endeavor of humanity so far. While we know that the Sustainable Development Agenda was already an aspirational endeavor and some SDG targets may need to be redefined, others may be entirely out of reach, but the goals remain a critical framework for cooperation. The importance of the goals, if anything, is reinforced by the pandemic. We need urgently to reconfirm our commitment to sustainable development and the Agenda 2030. The health crisis has in some ways acted as a wakening accelerator for an already ailing multilateral order. But at the same time, 
It highlighted that the way out of the current crisis will need more multilateralism. In its own way, this pandemic reinforces the starting postulate of the essential character of international cooperation, which is stated in simple and clear terms, unilateralism cannot be the answer to the challenges of our time. Whenever we look, whether it is the multiplicity of actors who confront each other or the complexity of crises that develop, the withdrawal into oneself and the fragmentation of the international society lead to dead ends. In the absence of international accepted international rules, everyone can see that the alternatives lead to fleeting results which leave the problems unsolved. The virus crisis illustrates this evidence with unprecedented acuteness. The pandemic crisis has served also as a wake-up call for putting human security and well-being to the forefront of public policies. And this is my second point. If the world of the day is not just building back, but building back better, one sure path is investing in people, in economies and societies that are clean, green, healthy, safe, and more resilient. It requires the world to invest more in people, in health, in science, research, in education, in learning, in order to ensure a sustainable path of development and fighting climate change. There are two important developments that I would like to mention here. The first is the ambitious European Union Green Deal that aspires to make the European Union climate neutral by 2050, and which covers every aspect of society and the economy. And the second, the bold statement made by President Xi Jinping during the last General Assembly of the United Nations, notably that China will aim to hit peak emissions before 2030 and for carbon neutrality by 2060. This is a significant step in the fight against climate change. President Xi went further to call on all countries to achieve a green recovery for the world economy in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. These two developments testify to strong political leadership and responsibility to humanity and to the planet. In order to achieve this ambition, we need, I believe, a new paradigm for international cooperation in science, technology, and innovation to boost science for human well being and for the protection of the environment. And this is my third point. The role of universities in education, in science, research, innovation which is on the agenda of this conference as well, and to build back better is immense. To succeed, we need stronger science. We need more connected science. We need open science. We need science that is more deeply integrated into policy making. Science flourishes through dialogue, through the interaction of peoples and cultures, through the meeting, of minds, and we need ethical science as well. Universities have a growing responsibility to translate this ambition to local circumstances and to building back better. This is where the importance of goal number four of the Sustainable Development Agenda, promoting inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all comes with all its critical importance for the future. Last but not least, we need to pay, to pay a special attention to rising inequalities because of the pandemic, inequalities of income and opportunities, inequalities of access to digital platforms and other resources. 
130 million people may go back to poverty. Millions of girls will not go back to school. There will be millions of lost opportunities for young people all over the world. The pandemic has in almost every dimension made inequity worse. I strongly believe progress has no meaning if it is only for a few, if it benefits just a few, if it doesn't eliminate poverty, reduce inequalities, protect the world we live in. The need today to reinvent multilateralism is strong, including global co collaboration on an equitable delivery of COVID-19 diagnostics, vaccines, and treatments in order to end the pandemic and get the SDGs back on track. It requires indeed more sharing and cooperation among governments and not less. It requires more sharing and cooperation among scientists and universities and not less. To end up, I'm more than convinced that we need a renewed commitment to multilateralism. We need a new global political and social contract around the global public goods, such as human well-being, protection of the environment, and reducing inequalities, embracing the ethics of scientific and technological advancement. I'm more than confident that this year's meeting of the prestigious Beijing Forum will contribute to the search of responses to many of the pressing challenges today. And I'm very much looking forward to the conclusions. Thank you for your attention.